Before we get into today's video, I'm pleased to announce that my merch store, my new merch store, is live. I've brought back popular designs and items like my Mando shirts, Mega Mugs, Jibber Jabber Tees, and so much more. You can find the link to it in the description down below. Thank you. Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another video. So tomorrow is the big day, Obi-Wan Kenobi episode 6, the big finale of the season. Now for many of us it's both really exciting but bittersweet because the show is coming to an end. Now ahead of the finale we have a lot of things to talk about so we're gonna dive straight into it. Now I will say guys there will be some major spoilers and talks of the leaks in this video so if you want to go in completely blind I suggest you turn away now but otherwise no more jibber jabber, let's dive straight into it. So right off the bat, we need to discuss the so-called rematch of the century. It was how the show was marketed to us in the first place, and Hayden Christensen the other day came out and said, we are going to get it in the final episode, so Darth Vader and Obi-Wan are going to have their second duel of the season, but this one is going to be a real lightsaber fight, a certainly more even match this time round, and it seems as though, according to the leaks, Obi-Wan is going to gain the upper hand by the end of the duel, leaving Vader injured by the end. Now, if the flashbacks in episode 5 were anything to go by, I've got really high expectations for this fight. It's going to be more reminiscent of the Battle of the Heroes duel on Mustafa in episode 3. And while Darth Vader has more physical restrictions due to the suit, he is still very much at his peak at this point in the timeline, and we did get some brief glimpses of it here and there. Now since Obi-Wan is going to be much stronger compared to earlier in the season, and much more reconnected to the Force, this lightsaber duel has every reason to go down in Star Wars history as one of the best. Well, let's hope so. So the big question is, where is the duel going to take place? That seems to be a focal question that many fans have. Well, according to MakingStarWars.net, the duel takes place on a ship over Mustafar. Now, whether they actually land on the planet and have a rematch in the same place they fought in Revenge of the Sith is unknown, but apparently it's going to be very clear that the fight is right above the lava planet. Now visually speaking, the potential is huge for a jaw-dropping classic cinematic fight, and my only hope is it delivers. Now as I've spoken about in the past, this duel is going to be where Obi-Wan tries to convince Vader to turn back to the light. He's going to try and bargain with his former apprentice, and it's likely he's going to bring up Padme as an example of someone who still believed in him, someone who knew he was still good inside. I'm sure this is going to be really emotional, and I can also imagine Obi-Wan calling him Anakin right to his face and telling him it's not too late and to run away with him. I think dialogue such as this could be crucial and it would also help to explain why later in the timeline Vader says to Luke, Obi-Wan once thought as you do. It's also why by the time of the original trilogy, Obi-Wan's given up on him. By that time, he knows that Vader is more machine than man. What I'm saying is this episode can do a lot to go the George Lucas route and connect some really important dots. Now, going into the last episode, evidently an extremely important plot point is Luke on Tatooine. Reva now knows about Luke, not the whole story, but she is aware, and her next steps are going to be crucial, not only to the plot of this season, but also to the potential of a season 2 or a spin-off series. At the moment, from Reva's point of view, Obi-Wan is protecting a boy for an unknown reason. She doesn't know about the secret separation of the twins, nor that Leia and Luke are Vader's children. But given the trajectory of the season, and how she's been set up as exceptionally intuitive, I suspect she'll find out by the end of episode 6, and what will likely happen is that Reva heads to Tatooine to threaten young Luke, but the leaks say at the last minute she changes her mind. Reva is full of inner conflict in these moments, but in the end she realises she cannot take the life of an innocent child or tear him away from his family. She does not want the cycle to repeat or anyone to go through what she did. It's also why she was kind of hesitant earlier in the season, in episode 4, when she almost tortured Leia. So after Kenobi's done fighting with Vader, he's probably going to rush back to Tatooine and try to reason with her. Now what happens afterwards in terms of Reva's story is anyone's guess. Originally, of course, they were gonna kill her off, but it looks as though Lucasfilm have bigger plans for her in the future. But my question is, if she finds out the big plan that Bale, Yoda, and Obi-Wan came up with 10 years prior, will she keep the secret? For the canon to remain as it is, Vader will not find out. So what's next for Reva? What kind of character will she be if she survives this show? Is she going to return to the Empire or not? There are so many questions we have going into this one, let's just see how it all plays out. I'm so excited for Deborah Charles finale, episode 6. Now speaking of Reva, my dear friends, there is one big moment from the Order 66 flashback in episode 5 
that has a lot of folks talking. And a question that's arised is, did Anakin stab Reva in the stomach as a youngling? Some people say yes, while others say it was just a reflective memory mirroring what happened to her in the present day. But if she was stabbed at the Jedi Temple, how did she survive? As some people have suggested, did someone come to her rescue, maybe another Jedi or another surviving youngling, or did revenge, as the Grand Inquisitor suggests, and her desire to make it out, cause her to live? In many ways, I really hope episode 6 gives us some more flashbacks and just generally brings everything full circle and explains some of these gaps. Now, of course, we can't talk about episode 6 without talking about Qui-Gon. It's about a 99% certainty we will both hear him and see him in the final episode. I think his words of wisdom are going to help Obi-Wan now that he's reconnected to the Force and he will guide his former apprentice through the duel with Darth Vader, the Chosen One. And as for the chances of seeing him, I'm predicting that the show will end with Qui-Gon's Force Ghost manifesting physically in front of Kenobi's eyes all the way back at his cave on Tatooine. Also, I've got a burning question. Does anyone know when Obi-Wan ditched the cave in lieu of his hut? I kind of want to see that. Obi-Wan deserves better living conditions, which he does eventually get by the time of episode 4, but nobody wants to live in a random cave with a pestering Jawa that keeps selling your stuff back to you. But going back to the question of Qui-Gon Jinn, forget the way that Liam Neeson has played coy for the press, he's definitely in this last episode. Fingers crossed, the leaks say he definitely is, and the first five episodes have been building up to some sort of connection between Obi-Wan and his old master, and that was one of the main reasons he was sent to Tatooine in the first place by Yoda. To to learn how to become a force ghost. And if it's true that we do eventually get a season 2 of this show, then maybe we will see some of that training in depth. That would be amazing. In preparation for episode 6, I'm not only going to rewatch the entire series, but I'm also going to watch The Phantom Menace. I've missed Liam Neeson in Star Wars so much, and I can't wait to see how he looks as Qui-Gon after all these years. It's been 23 years since The Phantom Menace. Just let that sink in. That's crazy. So I want to ask you guys, what are your hopes for episode 6, the final episode of The Kenobi Show? I did put this out as a community post and some of you have some really awesome ideas. But the consensus seems to be that everyone wants some Qui-Gon, some juicy, amazing fan service that does justice to the first five episodes and what everything's been building up to. And story-wise, this episode is going to give us the biggest shift in Obi-Wan's character development. He's finally going to act like a Jedi Master again and not just a hopeless recluse on Tatooine. And thematically speaking, the ideas of friendship breaking, betrayal and loss are going to be at the heart of the second duel with Vader and Obi-Wan. Their relationship is often strawmanned, but the story of Anakin and Obi-Wan is not just one of broken brotherhood, it's also a story about two people who did a lot of good together in spite of their differences. There's a deep humanity to it and it's a very difficult one to navigate in a show like this, but I'm sure they're going to do it justice. Darth Vader slash Anakin is a fundamentally complex character, and another aspect of this story that I find really compelling is how some of Anakin's feelings of betrayal for the Jedi Order are also reflected in Reva's story, and that parallel is really fascinating. It's all coming together, my dear friends, and we're just hours away from episode 6. As always, guys, I will be doing my full episode breakdown tomorrow, so make sure to hit that big red subscribe button down below and hit the bell so you're alerted as soon as it comes out. I'm sure we're going to have so much to talk about, so let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll see you tomorrow. May the Force be with you always. I'm Star Wars Meg. Have a good one.